Yes, spring has finally arrived. They're cleaning the streets. For me as a kid, that always meant that spring has arrived. They finally get to clean off all the rocks off the road and uh, you can skate again. <laughs> constantly on the move, jumping from trains to planes, hopping from one country to another. Just in the last three weeks, I was first up in northern Finland snowboarding and testing out the Insta360 Flow, and then from there, I right away jumped on a plane to go from Helsinki all the way to San Diego, California to attend the Sony Camera Camp, and just to hang out with a whole bunch of different creators and to be reunited with my brother, which was awesome, of course. And then from there, we got home and we went on a little family holiday to Paris. And because of all the traveling that I do, I wanna make sure that I'm traveling as light as possible, especially when it comes to my vlogging camera setup. But it's quite a balancing act because I do want a small and compact setup, but at the same time, I don't wanna compromise with quality. In the past, I've vlogged with the Sony ZV-1 or with my iPhone, and they're small and compact, but the quality is just not there or the user experience. But now I have a new vlogging setup and I think it's gonna be the ultimate balance act between being light and compact, but as well have great quality. And so let me reveal to you guys my new vlogging setup for 2023. Ta-da! Here's my brand new vlogging setup. This is the Sony ZV-E1 that just came out with then the Sony 1635F4, which is a very small widening lens. Then Sony's little tiny microphone and the Manfrotto Pixie Clip. Now, before we do a breakdown and I explain why I think this is the best vlogging setup in 2023, I gotta first give credit where credit is due. If you are enjoying the music in the intro of this video, that's all from Artlist, our sponsor of this episode. Artlist has the best music for content creators and they've made it so affordable that it's accessible for everyone. Artlist's monthly subscription, which gives access to music and sound effects to creators like us, costs only $9.99. And then if you're creating client work and you need to license music for those kind of projects, it only costs $16.90 per month to use as many songs and as many sound effects in your projects, which is just insane because I remember back in the day when I was doing wedding films, I was paying up to $200 per song for every single wedding film I created. I mean, can you believe it? $200. That means back in the day when I was shooting on average from 30 to 40 weddings per year, priced at $200 per song, I was spending anywhere from six to $8,000 a year just on a few songs for my wedding films. But now if you're a content creator like myself, you only gotta pay $9.99 a month, or if you're doing client work, $16.90, which is not a lot. And if you click the link in my description right now, our list has been kind enough to offer two months free for you guys. And if you're the type of creator who's constantly using stock footage or different motion graphics in your projects to make them even more high quality, Artlist has actually released a new package called Artlist Max, which encompasses everything under one roof. I'm talking music, sound effects, stock footage, plugins, templates, apps, all for just $29.99 a month which is super affordable considering the fact that you're gonna save so much time in the editing process and as well, you're gonna have a much higher quality final product. So again, if you're looking for fresh new music or high quality assets for your projects, make sure to check out Artlist by using the link in my description. Thanks again, Artlist, for being a long-term partner of this channel. So let's do a breakdown of this vlogging setup, which I think is the best vlogging setup for 2023. Now let's start off with the camera. This is the brand new Sony ZV-E1, which I actually had the privilege of testing and using last week at the Sony camera camp. That's right, I flew all the way from Helsinki to San Diego for literally three days just to test out this camera. Okay, uh, there's more truth to the story actually. I also did get to meet a whole bunch of amazing creators and I was reunited with my brother Maddie. So if there's ever an opportunity to jump on that, I'm gonna jump on that. But the Sony ZV-1 is basically a hybrid of all of Sony cameras into one. So basically it's got the size and compactness of the ZV series. It's got the video quality and low light capabilities of the Sony a7S III or FX3 having the same sensor and it's got the AI features that we already started seeing in the Sony a7R5 
and more geared towards content creators. So yeah, this camera definitely packs a punch for its size and price at only 2,200 US dollars. If you wanna hear more about the different AI features for content creators, I would highly recommend checking out all the other creators who have created just amazing content about this camera already. We're not gonna to go too in depth into it in this video because we're just gonna talk about this vlogging setup and why I think it's the best in 2023. But basically the reason why I love the Sony ZV-E1 as a vlogging camera, it has everything that I needed in the A7S III, but now just in a smaller body, which is great when you're vlogging and traveling because you wanna have as light as possible setup for vlogging. Second, my lens choice is the Sony 1635 F4. Now, most of the time I'm using the 1635 F2.8 G Master lens, but my great friend Robin at Sony Finland said, why not try out the 1635 F4? It's a lot smaller. And right away I was like, that is true. And the truth is often I don't need 2.8 because a lot of times when you're vlogging, it just goes way too shallow. Whereas with F4, I feel like it gives a little bit more depth and sharpness to your shot. And as well, if I do struggle with low light situations with F4, it's not a problem because this has the same sensor as the A7S III and you can easily crank up the ISO to 12,800, which is their base ISO and it's very clean. So no problem with F4 and in low light situations. This lens also has the zoom feature, which is kind of fun because then you can just zoom in and out while vlogging, while shooting with the power zoom. So it's kind of a fun little feature on this lens. But mostly I chose this lens for the focal length because it's really wide at 16 and you can zoom into 35. And as well, it's just such a small lens compared to the 1635 2.8 G Master lens. And then we have the Sony ECM B1M microphone. I just call it the Sony microphone because it's a lot easier to say. But there's three reasons why I love this microphone. First, there's no cords necessary. You just plug in the microphone into the hot shoe and whenever you turn on the camera, the microphone automatically turns on, which is great because there's been times where by accident my cord has come out a little bit and I've been filming a talking head shot with the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus and I didn't have any audio for that shot. As well, sometimes the cord gets tangled or stuck with the LCD screen, but here it's no hassle. It's just here on the top, really nice. I would love it if somehow you could tilt the microphone to the side because then this would make this even more compact. But hey, beggars can be choosers. This is already such a small setup compared to the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. I mean, just look at the size difference between these two microphones. Which comes to the second reason why I love this microphone. It's just so dang small. I honestly felt a little bit funny having a small compact vlogging setup and then putting the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus on top of the camera because the microphone was pretty much the same size as the camera body and the lens, which just didn't make sense. And last, just listen to the audio quality of this microphone. It's really high quality for its size and price range. All right, so testing audio of the Sony ECM B1M. This is what it sounds like, and this is what it sounds like when I add some effects that I use in Final Cut Pro. Test one, two, three. This is the audio of this microphone. Pretty dang good for that small size microphone. I'd much rather have a small microphone than this massive big Rode Video Mic Pro Plus. As well, this microphone has a really great feature that you can choose that it picks up the audio all around, which is really great when you're vlogging because you're often you know, filming yourself like this and then all of a sudden you turn it around and you're doing more POV style shot and the audio is gonna be picked up from both directions, which means you're gonna have great audio both ways. With the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, often I was having to actually turn around the mic and then film the POV shots and then turn it back when I'm vlogging, which is just not ideal in most situations. And last but not least, we have the Manfro pixie clip. This guy is just small, sturdy, it does the job and it's easy to use. So you got the three legs so you can set a camera down if you want to do talking head shot. It's got this nice little ball head and button that you just press the button and you can move the ball head. So you just attach it to the bottom of your camera like that and because it has the three handles you can hold it like this if you're vlogging. You can just press the button with your thumb, tilt it, there you go, I'm vlogging, talking, maybe I want to do a talking headshot, open up the three legs, and the camera's gonna sturdy, press the button, ball head is moving, and voila, we can start doing some talking headshots with the camera setup. Then when you're done, just pick it up, close, again, you wanna tilt it down with your thumb, like that, boom, we're ready to go. Well, it looks like I finally say goodbye to this clunky setup. Goodbye Rode Video Mic Pro Plus, goodbye Sony A7S III, and goodbye, Joby Gorilla Pod. You've served me well.
But now we've got a new player in town. 